on this computer. Hello, everybody. So let me hide some stuff here. What is this name or what is this? Radio panel. Uh, hide floating. There you go. Okay. So hopefully this is being recorded now. Let me minimize this. Yeah. So I, to start with the InDesign, I, uh, as a reminder, I already talked to the students, to you guys here, which are not you guys, but you might be the same, but connected together. So uh, this line here I was talking about is like a, we have agreed it's like a rock, so it can't be moved. That's the only element of the composition that I will ask you to please respect. So above that line, you will have the set of drawings and a set of kind of a exercises that we have done already together with the uh, photos of the models and then uh, below that line we're going to have some renderings to be simple one example would be here um, you can see quite clearly that you have some renderings that could be even grayscale um, that doesn't require much of realistic tone so we're going to be looking right after panel two you have the package of location and site plan with a little circle indicating where the site is, and then your references and materials and references kind of a conceptual in a little text. I think those are important. To the right, you're gonna have the, well, I don't know, I'm saying to the right, but it could be whatever you want it to be. Um, it's the exploded diagram where you have the original forms that you have collected from panel one, and then below, above, right or left, you're gonna have the photographs of your physical models. So they look cool here and nice together as an intro package for the entire panel. Now the rest is for you to decide, but I'm pretty much asking orthographic drawings, um, you know, axonometrics and exported um, analysis of the building. So, you know, things that are necessary to explain the project as best as possible. Uh, one thing I'm gonna do in this recording is mostly an issue of scale, how we make sure the scale is correct for a plan, for example, or a section, but uh, you can imagine how you could already adventure and do some axonometric. You can hide like the roof or some of the walls of your project and do a make 2D uh, with a line drawing and just fix the line the line drawings um, in Illustrator, save an Illustrator file, and then place it in, in panel two in the InDesign file. So those are I think necessarily scale drawing so that you could do relatively simple. This one here, it could be similar to that one where you take different objects or parts of your project, you move them in a particular place, and then you do the make to the. I would recommend that to most of this, especially the export analysis or the axonometrics, that you save as your Rhino file. No? So you could actually just save as a file. So before you start moving things in Rhino and start doing make to d so you don't interfere with the original file. At least you should keep you should keep the modeling, uh, let's call it the, the modeling part as serious as possible. Once you're done with the modeling, rigorously detailed, as many details as you can, the better. Well related in terms of scale, in terms of uh, layers, so everything is in a good place. The more details, again, the better for your renderings later on or your drawings now, et cetera, et cetera. So I recommend you push the modeling as much as possible. You finish that. And then I would recommend you save as so you have an original uh, final model. No? So when you save as, you can save it as, for example, as exploded diagram or exploded analysis. And there's where you start messing it up. You move the roof, you you know move the wall to the right, whatever you want to do, uh, depending on your project, you do it in whatever way you want. You do from an isometric point of view perspective, you do the make to the fix the illustrator, fix the line weight, and then maybe if you want to put a rendering underneath or if you want to color it in uh, Illustrator, it's up to you. You save that Illustrator, you bring it you place it into the InDesign file. So the same goes to this one. You can save as the original final model of your project and you remove, I don't know, the roof and then you add a clipping plane and you push the clipping plane so it cuts a particular area and you do your make to be. And then you might want to incorporate color into the walls and 
floors that you're sectioning. So it's up to you. You might want to put a rendering in grid scale on, underneath the vector base drawing in Illustrator. And then you save it and you put it inside. So I think each of these little axon metrics, exploratory diagrams, and so on, there's a little bit of work of, again, the steps that we have done already a thousand times. Just a make 2D process, um, fixing line weight, coloring, or placing the rendering underneath, matching properly the, the drawing, and then placing it into InDesign. So it, it's almost like a each drawing has its own path, its own mission in a way. But the plans and the sections, we need some kind of guidance and how do we work with scale orthographic drawings in a, in a simple way. I'm gonna do that video first, uh, a little bit of the scale issue. I'm gonna afterwards look into how can we get a section perspective in a very simple way. Uh, you can do that as well. And and then in another video, we'll do um, a bit more of line weight management in Rhino and so on. You might want to work with that, but chances are you will forget uh, soon because Revit does a great job at doing this. But it, it would be nice to know that they exist, so you might need it in the future and you can you know how to tackle that. Okay. So let me go now to our friend Rhino, and I think I did this on a different day. Um, there we go. So this is the Rhino thing. Uh, so this is our, our project I did in class. It doesn't have any elements inside, but it kind of had like the door openings that we talked about as the different layers, hopefully stated, the side glass, the side floor, remember we talked about it, and then we will have some kind of elements for the interior. Um, but the main goal of this video is just to, to go and jump ahead in terms of learning how to create a, um, a drawing that is a scale. So how would I go about it in a simple way, ABC? Uh, first thing what I would do is just uh, let's get rid of the clipping plane, I'm going to hide it, and I'm going to just go to, I'm going to delete some stuff here, I don't worry, I have those. I'm going to use the section command, as you know, and I'm going to go to the front view, select everything that I have, which is the main model, press enter, and then click two times, press and shift, or press and also, to make sure that the horizontal cut. Remember what happens when you do that, that you're given a plan. I press enter again and I can move this guy over here. Notice how all of the, the, the lines are actually coming at the same uh, layer, so that's not good. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to the front view. I'm going to do section. I'm going to take a look again at what's happening up here. Again. And it's actually, you know, assigned layers by and not current layer. We're going to actually say, input objects so, so that's what we want select all of them enter and click two times so so that means we get the section is the same thing but the difference is that now we have the layers for each of the objects great this is already fantastic notice that my plan is a little bit elevated and you might ask well, why you did that uh, the standard for where the plan height, the cut of the plan is four feet above the floor. So that's a standard in construction documentation. Uh, you can respect it by just doing, for example, a little line here uh, from the floor and say four, four feet above and then do the section from there. But you can also change that as long as you the doors, I think that's important. That you see the, the important elements of the plan, that's good. Uh, it's true that many times you cut at four feet, but then you also show things like furniture and so on from a little bit above. It's because you might have some elements that you're cutting you don't want to cut. So it's a little bit of a tricky business, no? But the plan cut, it is at four feet in the standard way. You can, again, do it a little bit higher if you want. But because it's higher, uh, there's a, a good thing that we could do is probably project 
the command project to C plane this element. So that's just going to take that plant to the C plane, which I, as you remember, is the grade of plane. And you can say delete the input, so it goes there. Okay. So that means that now we have a top plan that is organized very clearly. It's definitely the same scale as the drawing. And uh, one thing to mention is that the plan, sorry, that the model is indeed uh, one to one. Okay, so there's something you need to make sure that when you put a dimension here, di, and you put a dimension of 30 feet, is the building dimension. Uh, it's not like two inches, that's not a building dimension. So make sure that whatever you're doing right now in terms of modeling and the sections and so on, that you're doing it at real scale, one to one. Okay. You can just take this one here. I'm going to do another section. Remember, the same command applies no matter if you're doing a vertical section or a one. So you're going to press enter and move it here. I go to the perspective by control tabbing. I see that guy there. You no, know? I can rotate it by clicking at the gumball. As you know, the gumball, you can get it here. Click one for the gumball that is red to rotate this 90 degrees. And we have it. You know, I can go back to the top view, see that it's properly set there. But as always, I might want to project it to the C plane. You know? So I can go here. I can do that for all of the drawings. They project. Or I can go one by one if I do it. Do you know? So yes, there you go. Two drawings. Right? Let's say you have another plan at different heights. So height, you can again go and section command, select everything, and you cut a little bit above, press enter, move it over here. Okay, and another section maybe over here in the back. can do one by one. I'm just doing a bunch of them at the same time. I want to project the sheet plane those two. Yes. And then, okay, if I go to the top view, I have this guy, you know, so I can move them around. When I select this grid here, it means that I'm moving in both X and Y, by the way. That's a trick of the gumball that you can use. Or you can go like this, up and down. And you know you're never moving anything in the Z direction. Okay. Plans and sections. Okay. So now the question is scale. Because so what we could do is uh, ex export selected. We know how to do that. We can do a Illustrator, AutoCAD. We can do the, the many ways of exporting this in different ways. You do an export in Illustrator. You have several options, and you can deal here with the, the scale value. But I'm not going to present it this way. This is a, a, a way that I will talk about right after. I'm going to talk about layout. OK, so we'll do that afterwards. Layout is a thing that is very common in this kind of Rhino interface, AutoCAD interface. And it's a way of creating a piece of paper and a little window to the model space. So in order to do that, you press the plus here on the bottom and you have a new layout. In the new layout, you just need to give a little title. I recommend, you know, uh, it will make itself clear later on that we create one layout every single drawing that we do. So for example, floor plan, um, level one, print or PDF. I typically use letter size, uh, landscape. You just have to think of how much space you need from here. Uh, this is actually quite big. A letter size would be something like here. So we might take very little space from the other side, but it's 
always better to be a little bit big in terms of paper space than small. You'll see it when we get through it. Um, and you can add several details, you'll see what that means. I think for now I recommend that you do a one detail. Once you press OK, that title appears here. So we can go back to right from, but we will have another one. And it looks a little bit different. It's not like the other ones anymore. Okay. In what sense the difference? You can, there's a window and that's the detail. You said one detail, you have one window. So that window has some points in the middle, which is kind of a different array from any other rectangle. No? And not only that, when you click on the window, something happens here in the properties panel, you have this thing called like called detail view. Okay, here you can set your scale values. Okay, so as you know, uh, we have the, let's call it the one quarter inch equals one foot. You know, so what we could potentially do is clearly write that 0 0.25 and then one. So we will have the scale of that drawing here. Let me explain one thing before we do that. Uh, that detail view, by the way, we can double click inside of the detail view and it would be like a, almost like a jump into what is called the model space, which is one of these guys, you know, especially the, it's actually a top view. No? So then as I zoom out and in, I'm changing here under the properties, the scale, okay? You can change that, the, um, the scale here or where I mentioned before. Normally, I just put a focus on what I want to have. I step out and then I select the window and change that to what I have, so 25. Oops. And then one. Okay. So notice what happens here. The plan at scale one to four. Notice what happened. I don't know if you've seen what happened there. So zero twenty-five to one is just what it's doing is automatically the multiplication by four. Zero twenty-five by four equals one. One times four equals four. So basically, Rhino is saying, "Hey." I don't like that you're putting 0 0.25. I'm going to multiply it and put the exact same ratio, but with um, with a one here. No? So that means that for a letter size paper, and this is the paper we said in the beginning, it fits barely. It does fit the plan at scale one quarter of an inch equals one foot. That's a bit too big. No, so what we're gonna do is a one eighth of an inch. I think sounds like a more logical scale for a drawing. No? So the one eighth, I could place here one eighth, but it's probably just one to eight is what we need, no? There you go. So again, select on the window one eighth, or you double click inside of the window and you can change it here. One feet, uh, one inch, uh, equals one foot, but multiply by eight. Yeah. Yeah, let me pause this guy, pause this soon. Yeah, so I was asking in class how, we're, how we got this floor level plan once. I'm gonna do it three times or so. Um, let's imagine it's just, we're looking at doing only one plan here. And I recommend it's actually one at a time. And again, don't worry too much about the idea that is uh, smaller than the paper. Just focus on the idea that the window detail here is actually one eighth, if you want a one eighth of an inch, uh, or one fourth of a quarter, et cetera, et cetera. So you just need to kind of have that ratio. You can, again, you can do the, the introduction of the fractional numbers. You can do that also entering in the window and then changing those numbers here, the same thing, okay? Now, now we have that set. It's as simple as either save as and do the kind of, you can do the AutoCAD drawing, it will keep the 
the line weights of everything there that you have drawn there, or you can do an illustrator. Um, so all of this will keep that particular scale. Another one you can do is just a PDF. You do actually a PDF here. Desktop, and I'm going to call this floor plan level one. Okay, you can save that. And here's a window that's telling you, well, is this what you want to print? Make sure that the size is correct. Resolution doesn't really matter because it's a vector, so it's not an issue that you have to care. And you know you can check these things, making sure that it's okay. It's going to say what view do you want? Is the one we just created, which is the layout. Um, so in that sense, everything is correct. Okay, I'll put this no. I think it should be the, the layout thing. Okay. Yeah, scale to see because that's the one we need. And and these are the things I'm gonna be talking right after. So if you say okay to that, I'm gonna start thinking. Hopefully. And we create this PDF. It is, I double click, and that's a PDF, which is vector based. No, so if you zoom in, that's a perfect vector. And PDF, as, as you know, you can open them in Illustrator as well because they're vector based. But instead of saving that, uh, PDF, you can just save it as Illustrator and take it into Illustrator and work there. Um, but now that particular drawing, we could actually bring it here. Control D to place desktop or plan. Now, when you place this plan, this PDF, you don't click two times because you're changing the scale. You click only once. And that is one eighth of a names equals one foot. Remember why it looks a little low res. Remember that this is just a high quality print and it's gonna look crispy and nice. So obviously we need to fix line weights and so on illustrator. Um, and you might want to fill to fill the the walls with whatever filling you want and, and so on which we can do now, actually. Let's go back to Rhino. Uh, if you do a save as illustrator and floor plan level one, and you say now then preserve model scale. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll open it straighter now. So while the straighter opens, we can uh, continue a little bit of the same process so we learn the same step again and again. So that's one floor plan level. So what I could do is, for example, right click on this one and say move or copy. This allows you to say, just create a copy of the same one and say, okay, that's, you know, we can rename that one and call it level two. and then enter the window and pan without zooming in and out. And that would be another one. Or 
we could just, I'm just gonna say plus, new layout. You do the whole same process. Let's say section A, letter size, letter name, one detail, okay. This is the same paper that I mentioned, select the window. We agreed it was gonna be uh, one, two, four for a quarter, one, eight, four. Or one eighth, uh, one eighth equals one inch. No, so that would be an eight here. Now I could potentially have both of them here, but I'm just gonna because I want to do it several times. I'm gonna leave that as a section right there. Okay, I'm gonna move that window, and I'm just gonna do another. I do another right click and move a copy, move to the end, create a copy and rename that one, right click, let's say B, actually, no? So here I enter, and I know there's another one here, so I pan. Again, if the second I do this, I mean, in scrolling and out, look at what happens at the scale value. So that's not gonna work. You know, we need to make sure that that's the proper scale. So I'm going out again, double clicking, select, and just making sure that's actually the number we need. So we can coming in, we only pan once we get the correct scale. So now I have one, two, three, four um, with the different drawings and I can go to each of them and I could potentially save as, or I can even, uh, yeah, save as each of them as Illustrator, take it into Illustrator, fix the line weight, do some coloring if I wanna do something uh, of interest there. Um, Patches are very easy in Illustrator, so you will use the light paint bucket to paint inside, etc. etc. I can go through it in the second video in a second, so it doesn't become like a crazy video here. 